in that 20 year period, he has become very, very good at what he does. Um, he has traveled to over 50 countries and it is our absolute pleasure to have him here tonight. I did want to, when I, when I saw him make his presentation in Melbourne, one of the things that struck me is, on, uh, is how, how, despite his travel around the world and that, how he still connected and, and represented his hometown in, in his storytelling. Uh, I certainly know that his parents, who are here tonight, and a special welcome to them, are very proud of him. And I'd like to say that on behalf of the college, we're very proud of him. Would you please welcome Marcus Ryan? Good evening. Uh, my name is Marcus. I'm a uh, former student of Wampagi Secondary College, and I now make a living as a stand up comedian. I've got one thank you to thank for that, because most of my jokes have been at the expense of one thing. <laughs> uh, like, uh, you know when you see a sign that says, you are here? Uh, in one thank you, the sign usually says, why are you here? <laughs> good, good. Well, the fact that well, when I was growing up, uh, we never had traffic lights, which was always good for people who visited, because there was no reason why they needed to stop. They could just keep going. <laughs> I've had to change that joke, damn you Bunnings. Uh, <coughs> I've told those jokes all over the world, so I, I kind of put one thank you on the map for the wrong reasons. Uh, I don't really know why I'm here tonight. Uh, in, in April I was outside the Melbourne Town Hall, I was uh, doing the comedy festival, and uh, Darren Parker approached me, and I was wearing a pleather jacket, I had a handlebar moustache, I looked like a cross between an underbelly character and someone on Narcos. And uh, my show was all about sex, drugs and crime. Uh, I stood next to a life-size banner of myself with my name and the word drugs all over it. And, uh, and Darren was looking for something to do, so I offered him and his family free tickets to see my show. Uh, because even as a struggling artist, I know how little teachers get paid. <laughs> That's a lie, I'm not struggling. <laughs> In the show I told a whole bunch of stories about sex, drugs, crime and the times I've been arrested. And during the show I pointed out to the audience that this is how his students end up. <laughs> Afterwards he asked if I could come and talk to you tonight. <laughs> Which made me think maybe teachers are being paid too much. <laughs> Or was this just some kind of joke at my expense? And after I speak, there'll be another former student come out and I will be the example of what not to do. Uh, I don't know. Uh, you parents that are here tonight, you can relax. I'm not gonna give your uh, children career advice. Let's face it, most of the students are probably texting each other right now, making plans on who is buying booze for the after party. So I can sing Baby Shark and have just as much impact on their lives right now, it wouldn't make a difference. <laughs> By the way, I'll be at the bottle shop in about half an hour for my news. For the students, what works for you in life won't necessarily work for the next person, and that's okay, because there's no one template for a successful, happy life. And I can guarantee your parents and teachers don't really have a clue what's going on. We're all just making it up as we go. But I can share you my story and what I've learned over the years and maybe you can relate somewhat and take something from that tonight. Uh, I come from a respected family in the community. A uh, family member was one of the first mayors of Wampaggy in 1913. In primary school I was a student president and the swim sports captain even though I couldn't even swim. Uh, slim pickings at Bilsa Street. Wampaggy <laughs> State is greatly overrated. Uh, <laughs> I was on the junior school council over at Dudley and I hosted assemblies and concerts and I stood on this very stage over in that corner in 1997 as a year 12 student leader giving a graduation speech. I was a good student but I didn't really care about school. On paper it looked like I was doing well. But inside it was a different story. I was short, I had freckles, I had terrible acne, I had braces, I was a late bloomer, puberty sucks. I hated my body, my looks, my personality, I lacked a lot of confidence and I was shy. I didn't know it at the time, but I had severe depression, anxiety, and I was introverted. Hello, ladies. <laughs> uh, 
most things weren't diagnosed or even talked about like they are now, so I, I didn't even know how to explain it or who to talk to. I lost two friends to road accidents and two others took their own life. I bottled up my own feelings and I spent the next few years crying myself to sleep, wishing the pain would go away. Just a reminder, they got me to come and talk to you. <laughs> I graduated with a TER, which I think is called an ATAR now, I don't know, a uh, TER of 30. Uh, I, was, I was lost. Uh, I was brought up to think that having a job, money, owning a home and raising kids were the most important things in life. Not by my family, but by society in general. I didn't get into uni or TAFE, I didn't want an apprenticeship, and no job interested me. And life itself was becoming too much. All I knew was that I could make people laugh. Growing up with three older brothers and being a tiny kid, I used comedy as a defence mechanism not to get bullied. It helped me in social situations to make friends, to impress girls, even though they always wanted to kiss my friends instead. <laughs> I never had a sister, but according to every single girl I had a crush on in school, I was like a brother to them. <laughs> <laughs> I've never really felt like I fit in, but the one consistent thing I found I was good at was comedy. So I pushed through the tough times and I chased it. I did my first gig in San Remo almost 20 years ago to this day. It was in January, uh, January 8th, 2000. The next day I quit my job and I vowed I'd move to Melbourne to become a comedian. It was the scariest thing I've ever done in my life, but I finally had a reason to live. I sacrificed so much. Relationships, friendships, stability, sanity, but I'll never look back and wonder what if. I always thought that uh, the schools would only ever invite academics to come back and do these kind of speeches. You know, people who've had degrees, who've completed university and, and on paper are successful, so that they could come back and talk to the students. But then again, I always thought that at a graduation ceremony, everyone would be wearing those square hats with the little tassels on it, and I'd get to wear one as well and throw it in the air. But that's not how it all works out. Life isn't like a movie or TV all the time. So I wondered, even today, why me? And I started thinking about success and, and what is success, because everything is different for every single person. Success isn't defined by what car you drive, the money you have in your bank account, or what degree you have hanging on the wall. We're all very different and I want you to remember that you are very different and don't judge yourself on the person next to you. I was successful the moment I did my very first ever stand-up comedy show. Because even in the face of failure, I tried something I always wanted to do. It scared the absolute hell out of me. I fell in love with it and I did everything I could to turn that dream into a career. Comedy for me is not a job, it's a way of life. Find what you love and chase it and never settle. Be honest with yourself, take chances and don't be afraid to fail, but most of all don't settle. What's the point? I could give you a whole bunch of quotes to live by and live, laugh, love and hashtag YOLO. Instead I want to leave you with a few hopefully important things you can take away. Listen to your parents, but don't let them dictate your life. What worked for them might not work for you. Don't be afraid to leave home. It's a scary world out there, but if you stay in your comfort zone, you'll never know what else you might achieve. Find a mentor. Talk. Speak to anyone. Ask questions. Never stop asking questions. And if you're going through hell, just keep going. It can and will get better. Be kind to people. Get a pet. Learn to meditate. Breathe. Exercise. Stop worrying so much about the past or the future and enjoy the moment you're in. I've been scared in the past and put off doing things because of failure, but I've adopted a little motto in life, something will happen. And every day I wake up and I just think about that, something will happen. I now do things with that attitude. I can fail if I don't try it, and I can fail if I do try it, so why not just give it a go? Something will happen. And that's why next April I've decided after 20 years of doing comedy, I'm actually going to come home and do my first ever gig in one thaggy, which is the scariest bloody thing I've ever thought of doing. <laughs> and I'm going to be filming a comedy special right here on this stage. So uh, that scares the hell out of me. So uh, if anyone is getting kept down next year, congratulations. I'll see you at the show. <laughs> April 9th, booking tickets now. Uh, <laughs> Look around you, the friendships you have now 
are going to be some of the longest lasting friendships you'll have. Cherish them. Because in 20 years from now, you'll all have one thing in common. You were the last class to graduate from the McBride campus, and that's pretty cool. Congratulations. <laughs> and remember, nobody is going to make your dreams come true. Sometimes you have to go out and make your own. Even if it is about an hour before this speech with a bit of cardboard and some shoelaces. <laughs> Thank you very much. Good luck for the next week.